But um, but yeah, but I mean, like, but my big takeaway from it was that it's a 360 that has a slightly more dope controller and a Blu-ray drive, which is cool. Yeah. I wish my 360 had both of those things, you right. know, but I don't know if I'm ready to go drop 400 bucks or however much it's going to end up being. Yeah, we'll see. I, what, what, what do we think for and price? What? Do we think five and three if there is a subsidization? I, I would, I would, I would put the subsidy at two and put it at a long yeah. contract because like three two, or four years. Well, no, like like two That's years like, minimum because yeah, okay. nobody's going to sign a four year contract. But no. um, because if you think about the prices that cell phone companies are subsidizing, right? Yeah, so it's like yeah. you go get you go get the new Galaxy whatever for two hundred yeah. bucks and you're on a two year contract. That phone cost T Mobile six hundred and fifty dollars. Right. Yeah, right. you know so. Well, so yeah, even if yeah. even if the retail skew is between four and five hundred and fifty bucks, you know, or like three fifty and five fifty, mm-hmm. like I would assume and, uh, the contract version will end up being at two. In these situations, are you imagining like is the contract directly with Microsoft? Like, is that, I don't know what they've been doing with the three sixty. I know they had a subsidy right. version of that, but is it with Microsoft directly? I think it's, you get it at a Microsoft store. So you, yeah, yeah. you could only buy that from a Microsoft store. Okay. Right. And it's the worst. Um, I think two is too we, low for the subsidized version. Me too. Yeah. I, even I if you have, let's say they raise Xbox Live to seventy dollars a year, that's still only one hundred and forty dollars in their pocket. Uh, right. You know, like I'm thinking like four hundred, three hundred subsidized, and they'll make the Xbox three sixty ninety nine bucks. Guys, I'll be right back. Okay. Keep talking. No, but but and while PS three hangs out at like four and five hundred dollars. How about him, guys? I mean, I'm sure they'll. I'm sure they'll. They'll figure the math in a way that it works for them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the whole idea of a subsidized console makes me kind of feel weird. It exists. It exists right now. I know. It's a. It's a real thing that I don't like. Like, I I, I don't see a problem with it. I mean, I think it's a really. I think it's a really consumer hostile way to take someone's money. Yeah. I I I mean, okay. So what's an Xbox 360? Do what? What? How? How super useful is an Xbox 360 without gold? An Xbox 360 without have gold. gold is yeah. only going to take Can't your money Netflix? right now, Can't and use it's not going to be something that you're not interested in as soon as the new thing comes out. You see what Still I'm saying? Still has a point. How yeah. would I'm I? Here. Even, I'm here. I'm here. How would I even Bing something if I didn't have? <laughs> you can Xbox use Bing without gold, can't guys. You? I made. I made it. Did, what did I miss? We're, we're talking about the merits of the current subs- contract subsidized right. Xbox 360. Oh, uh, I mean, it's, it's your problem with it. I mean, there's, there's <laughs> the current the current one is essentially just for like I, it's for hitting people who wouldn't buy a 360 normally, right? And isn't it only the four gig model that's subsidized? Yes, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. It's yeah. the one that's not worth owning, and you end up paying too much money for it for a product that you can't get rid of whenever the new better one is out. Yeah. Which is the main problem. And it's like, okay, well, so now the Xbox One is out, and I want that instead of this Xbox 360, but I'm locked into my contract for another year and a half, so I right. have to pay an early termination fee that I don't know the but specific you, figure, I'm but actually probably curious. more than I mean, it would cost to just buy an Xbox in the first place. The iPhone not, 4, 5 is out, but I... Does having Xbox Live... Xbox can't buy it until my contract oh. is up with AT&T, since I only right, got the same on, idea. Hold on a second, guys. I got... That was some weird Skype right. issues there. Yeah, sorry on me. I, I had like Dylan was like lagging and stuff too. Okay, here. so maybe all around. It but might here's have been a weird question. <laughs> oh. Right now for. Nope. You have to do that question again. Okay. Well, yeah, this is this is on me, I think. Austin, I hate you right now. I'm yeah. sorry. No, I don't really hate you. Dylan, I get what you're saying, and like the situation is the same. Like you can't buy an iPhone five because you're waiting for your iPhone four contract to run out. But like, just because that's the way that it is for cell phones doesn't mean it doesn't totally blow. Like that's. Oh no, I'm not saying it's great, but I'm saying it's at this point it's an accepted consumer thing. Yeah, Yeah. it's it's not. It's not an absurd idea, which is the sad part to me because like I think it should be. And I mean, in the end, like I said, Xbox Live is essentially a mandatory like subscription. Mm -hmm. Not quite, it's not like needed, but it's pretty close. Like, you can't do a lot of stuff on an Xbox without gold. Yeah, I mean, we've accepted at this point that, like, I mean, it seems like most people agree that uh, Sony's probably going to do a sub- new subscription service as well. Well, they've talked yeah. about doing different sub- sur- subscription levels, but they haven't said anything specific about 
what they I would, would be. I would be really shocked. I mean, like happy, but shocked if they don't end up doing one as well. Yeah, man, they could charge me a hundred. Like something more year. so more than more than PlayStation Plus, I guess is what I should say. They could charge me a hundred dollars a year for PlayStation Plus, and I'd pay it. It's a good. PlayStation Plus has gotten pretty baller. It's really good. Unfortunately, it's gotten to the point where I don't see a need to buy a lot of PlayStation 3 games because I'll get them for free eventually. <laughs> <laughs> but That's my, my problem with, compu- with PC gaming is like I built a gaming PC last year and now I don't buy games when they're new because I know eventually they'll be on sale on Steam and I can get them that yeah. way. Yeah. But, I mean, we talked, uh, well, one of the few things well, I can that, remember that, from that uh, start stream. That, Sorry, I was just going to throw out, um, somebody on Twitter today was asking me, like, why are people mad about the potential of not having used games on the, uh, on the Xbox One when that's how it's been on, like, why are people okay with that being that way on PC? And I was like, well, big difference that I see is just that, like, stuff goes on sale on PC and on Steam so often. Yeah. Exactly. I don't see that happening. Unless Microsoft gives publishers control over their own prices. Yeah, which would be great, but I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Plus, I mean, there's never, there hasn't been a history of I can take this disc out of my exactly. PC, bring it to my friend's house, and we'll play Street Fighter. Exactly, like that's that's something that changed in PC culture, like you know, decades ago, right? Yeah. yeah. There's, there's also no mainstream culture nowadays for trading in PC games, which is a huge part of the console ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Although they have said there's going to be a trade in. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm not saying that you can't do that with the new one. I'm just saying that it's it's not part of the Steam system. Or, it's not part of the PC gaming mentality. Like, PC yeah. gamers have been conditioned for years to think that that's just not part of how they do that's, business. Which is pretty crazy, because Green Man Games does do trading in, which is kind of cool. Like, that actually surprises me when I see it. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to see... I mean, like, so that's probably the biggest fuck-up of, of all of the Microsoft stuff today, is just, like, their messaging on what's going on with used games and with that whole thing mm-hmm. is just... It's messed up. Like they don't. It seems like every outlet had a slightly different story today. Yeah, yeah. Like, all, it seems like really they got like five different answers from five different people for five different outlets. Right. And it was just and like there's a there's a version out there that could be really rad, uh, and there's lots of versions that could suck really bad. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but like, so one the one uh, I guess it was the Kotaku story where someone said, uh, "Oh, you'll be actually be able to trade trade games with your friends." on Xbox Live. And that would yeah. be incredible. Um, be cool. there's, an, like, there's a version of that that is rad as hell. Uh, there's also a version of that that is just like a nightmare because that's what you have to do when you go over your friends or blah, you blah, blah. Right? buy like, the whole game. Right. But, yeah, and there's also, there's also a version of that that's like... I mean, even if that's possible, that still cuts out, that like gets rid of the whole... At, at least at face value, without some, some sort of extra systems it get, gets rid of the current model of used games it does right. it absolutely and, which i know a lot of people would be okay with but but i think that the used game market serves a really good purpose I, yes, yeah i am really torn on that because yeah on one hand i i absolutely think i i get why if you're a developer or a especially if you're a publisher why you don't like the current used game model um but that said i don't know why the i don't think publishers would really like this ideal trade you it's know uh, french trade it them. would be really bad for them too because um, then I'd be like, oh yeah, I finished, you know, whatever Mass Effect three, uh, year, you know, a year ago. You haven't played it yet. Here, you can have my copy. Like, yeah, totally. Well, the, so. the most recent version I've heard from Microsoft is actually somewhere in the middle, which isn't too bad. Which is, mm-hmm. you can take a game to your friend's house, right. play it on your Xbox account on his Xbox. It installs itself because all games have to install completely to the hard drive, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, and then if he wants to later play the game, he just has to buy a license, like for an Xbox Live Arcade game. Right, exactly. It. So it's so it's like That's cool. So it's like I'm you cool install with- the game on your friend's Xbox and then you pick up the controller and because of its biometric whatever, it knows who you are. <laughs> right, so oh, you just like, stay at your heart. Cloud account because you're of course going to have an Xbox Live Gold account. Right, of course. And so it the it measures your heartbeat with its laser camera and then it knows you know, like uh, your social security number and stuff. And so it knows that you bought the game. And so it lets you play it. But as soon as you leave the house, then a cage drops around the Xbox until <laughs> they give it $100 for the game right. again. And I don't, I don't want to get too much into Austin's territory, but I think this is another opportunity to follow the money. I, you know There's what? always I'm an like, opportunity fight, fight, to follow Austin the money. Mind, I don't mind. You know what? I, I'm about knowledge and I'm about, I'm about you know, people, information. I'm about information. That's what this is about. Okay. So if you have information to give me, I do. give me that information. 
All right, so most of the bad news today about used games came from one person, Phil mm-hmm. Harris. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As we know, used to work at Sony. Mm-hmm. And they were having a console launch of similar disaster proportions. I mean, it's obvious he's a plant. From he still works for Sony. Oh all the man! Money, all the money he still he still works for man. It he's makes so much sense now. Microsoft, in the eyes of the hardcore gamer, in order to get Sony the favor back, it only it only makes sense. All right, if you follow, he's the gonna you know what? Course. You know what's gonna happen? It's gonna be WrestleMania, and he's gonna be in the middle of the ring, and all of a sudden <laughs> sure. it's gonna be like, wait a second, wait a second, is that is that is that Sony's music? And he's gonna rip off his T-shirt, and underneath it's gonna say like PS4 for life, and it's it's I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm so excited. It's going to be great. Sting is going to walk in in a New World <laughs> Order shirt. Just start wrecking fools. Oh, that would be the best E3 ever. <laughs> I seriously would like that so much. Because yeah, I feel that's what's going to happen. Is that Sony's music? <laughs> <laughs> Sony's music. What is oh that god. exactly? Oh my god. <laughs> that son of a bitch. <laughs> my god. It was me, Austin. It was me, Austin. <laughs> uh, okay, I don't know. I don't know where to go from there. And then, of course, Peter Moore runs in with the Stone yeah. Cold Stunner. Boom! Takes them both out. EA console. At EA. Peter, Peter Molyneux jumps into the ring, opens up Curiosity, and what's in the cube? It's a folding chair. Well, bam! <laughs> 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 B. Oh, <laughs> oh. Uh, we guys, we are actually making the best E3 ever. <laughs> I wish E3 was really like, like this. You guys are actually making me really bummed for E3 because I know it could never live up to this. <laughs> this is, I, Phil, I was thinking about this the other day, and this is probably going to be the biggest E3 that like we cover. Oh, absolutely. For- yeah. No, I I was freaking out last year because I was like. You know, first E3, uh, I guess, and the year before that when the Wii U mm-hmm. was introduced. But first E3 where I really get to cover a new console. But I was expecting last year to actually see uh, new what was new from Sony and Microsoft also. Right. So, like, yeah, this year is going to be... No Nintendo! Be... This this year is going to be whack. No Nintendo. Well, see, I'm it's really weird. Bothered. They're there. It's... Yeah, that, that's the thing. Nintendo was like, we're not doing E3 this year, but right. we're going to have a booth on the floor, and also They're we're still inviting E3 everyone to, to come see our games. So it's I like, just, what is different Nintendo all? has some top-tier conferences, though. Like, every yeah. Nintendo meme came out of a conference. All of them. <laughs> right, mm-hmm. that's true. No one's body can be ready. No, that's right. not true. They'll still do. There's, there's, they will still do a Nintendo Direct. Like, yeah. we'll still get yeah. a lot of holding fucking bananas or whatever. Like, yeah. <laughs> You know, Wada holding bananas stinks compared to I'm here to what is it like? What the hell was Reggie's thing? Now I can't even remember. This is terrible. Oh. I'm here to kick some ass and play some games. Sure. Something like that. Yeah, guys, oh. I can't. I, oh, I can't lie. It. I'm just. I'm I still thinking about E3 as WrestleMania. I'm picturing oh. Jason Rubin in the in up in the rafters. <laughs> no one's seen Jason Rubin since THQ closed down. What's he? What's he doing? Oh, oh wait, I can't this wait. Is t- this is the perfect place for Wada to show up. Like, you know, the coffin oh. opens. And Wada's alive, man. <laughs> oh, oh. And in his hand, he has the Wii U 2. Oh, God. The Wii U oh, is oh. just a, a, a classic misdirect by his manager. Of course. Guys, oh. I made a terrible mistake. What? Did you get that cat? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Why'd you get the cat? Don't you know we were all about dogs? With Awada's long Ross brother that you thought had died years before in the funeral home. Oh, that's amazing. I can't wait. Me either. And then Keiji Inafune and Phil Fish come in, in a, as a tag team that Good hates Japanese team. games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is wrestling you guys. What, what is the name of this wrestling league? Real life, man. Just, yeah. like, <laughs> what are you talking about? You have to find some way to work in, like, <laughs> Eve's Guimont, too. Like, all of a sudden, <laughs> out of nowhere. Oh, 
Oh, can we? Oh my God, Ubisoft conference this year. I'm so that's what I'm legitimately excited. I mean, for. that's my favorite every year because it's so ridiculous. Like, like it's it's yeah. consistently the most painful. What they need to do is they need to bring back Aisha Tyler because she was great. Yeah, she was, she great. was really good. I got killed well, by a fire. I got killed by uh Phil. I, I can't Phil. do this. I can't do this. Cameo <laughs> appearance, Mr. Caffeine. Because he's the best thing that's ever happened to Ubisoft pretty much ever. Like, there could not be, a, a, let's say, a comedian, for the sake of argument, because we have nothing else to call him. <laughs> All right? There could not be a comedian that fits French sensibilities as, <laughs> as Mr. Caffeine, right? Like, he's, like, perfectly tailored to, like, the French audience. They loved him, I'm sure. Was that the dude during... Which guy was that? Which was doodly, 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 doodly. Oh, yep, yep. right. Uh, you, know, you know what I didn't think about? Now that Next Gen is actually here, you guys, we might actually finally see... And maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but we might actually finally see Beyond Good and Evil 2. <laughs> no. Um, not this year. Man, uh, if you want a, a wrestling plot line, what about Patrice bust into that Ubisoft? Oh, that would be the best... <laughs> With a folding chair, just takes everybody out on stage. Shows up. It's really sort of like a shadows of the Beyond Good and Evil Kickstarter coming from uh, him. Oh God, that would be rough, man. <laughs> something like that, you oh, know. Man, do you guys think Patrice is going to kickstart something? I bet you Patrice will kickstart something in the next year or two. He's probably one of the few people working right now that I would trust my money with. He's not working right now. That's the problem. <laughs> Yeah, that is the problem. Maybe you just go work at Precursor or whatever the heck that studio is called. Oh, yeah, God, stream, no. The stream's not down, right? I saw somebody in the chat, Spooky yeah, Attic says. The stream is up. Okay, stream is up. Was a little, Spooky Attic said RIP stream, so I worried. It was a little. Maybe we were talking about wrestling too much. Maybe. By God! Dennis Dyack rises out of the floor and like wipes everyone's memory, and then everybody just sees oh. the game startup screen. Oh, God. Dyack. Oh. I'm kind of excited for Shadows of the Eternals. As if it exists, I mean, it's if not, it actually happens, it it's won't not happen. Happen. funding, man. I really want it to happen, like, so What's bad. What's that Kickstarter it's, at right now? Not low. Not enough. This is something <laughs> that I've not been able to find an answer for it anywhere, is they said straight up, we can't do a Kickstarter because we're in Canada, and then, like, four days later, they were like, hey, check out our Kickstarter. Because you just have to have someone with an American bank account, yeah. basically. Like, is that it? Kickstarter. For, yep. Yeah, you have to have an American bank account. Yeah, so Kickstarter? I don't think I don't think they actually ever. I, I could be wrong. That I don't ad- think they actually ever said that they couldn't do it. I think that was like the people like came up with that explanation it. because it's in like the Kickstarter FAQ. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's been a thing before where Canadian companies have had to have someone that lives in America make the Kickstarter for them, essentially. The uh, Shadows of the Eternal Kickstarter is at eighty-seven thousand dollars out of one point three million. <laughs> Um, yeah, they also had. Cool. They you also my have contribution would help, but it, I mean, listen. no one else is reaching out. You know, they also have the one hundred and fifty-six thousand from their yeah, their, but that, like private but thing. That doesn't count doesn't toward whether that team makes or not because they get the money, right. or did they right. give up on the right, 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 right. Right. Yeah, if they if their Kickstarter doesn't reach it, they don't get that eighty thousand, regardless of what they've raised on their sure. own. Did, oh yeah, that's true. Mm. They should have done Indiegogo. Captain Jones oh, well. says, "What Kickstarter is this? We're talking about the um." Dennis Dyack's new company, Precursor Games. Well, he's on the ex Silicon Knights people who are working on yeah. a uh, Eternal Darkness. He is not. He is not legally he's allowed to successor. handle the business side of anything at that company. Blows <laughs> my mind. That, so that thirty-minute video that he had of him, like that was crazy. I, I haven't been able to bring myself. I'm so excited for that game to come out. Like you should I'm, watch it. It's just, it's really a, it's like crazy and kind of entertaining. He's, yeah. he's really gone off the deep end. It's he actually pretty- he actually apologizes gone? for for X Men Destiny. Like he admits that it was a bad game, wow. which I was a little surprised by. Phil, well, I hear you really like that game. I saw I saw you play it a bunch. I don't so like that game. No. No, you, you know what? That. No, the, who you know who likes that game? Justin McAvoy loves that game. He does Played not. the whole thing. What does he really? The whole thing. I don't know if you're like being serious. Review, or Justin like likes really places. bad games sometimes. No, the, so I don't know this, if you're serious. This is, this is a goof. Okay. I like I like Two Human. <laughs> like that. I, I think Two Human had no jokes. Some okay stuff. Did you play co-op? That's yeah, the way to play that yeah, game. Yeah, I know. I, is it? I it did. Is, like, it I had fun co-op. I did not. 
<laughs> it was a star. Maybe you should yeah. look for a soul, and then you might listen. Don't... Are you for or against too human, Austin? Are you too or not enough human? I saw the... Uh, <laughs> not enough human. Dylan, I really <laughs> liked... be rezzed by a Valkyrie. I really liked yeah. the picture Dylan showed me of uh, after... What is it called? Shadows of the Eternals. Shadow of the Eternals. Uh, yeah. Went up on went up on green light, and somebody <laughs> modified the green light page to say for or against. Oh. <laughs> For people who don't know, uh, the the Dyak back in the day during during the two human build up uh, went on was that on Gaff that was on Gaff right? Gaff yeah. And and had people decide if they were for or against two human. Yeah, it was a <laughs> whole thing. Ridiculous bets, right? And then he and then he, he went on bet based on the Metacritic, if I remember right. Was then, it, it was either Metacritic or sales. And then he went on. Sales. Then he went on one up yours on an episode that I was on. Fuck and that! Oh, wait, that you were on that episode. I haven't listened to I that. Was, I didn't I was think you were on it. On that episode, oh, that, was, that like, was the most awkward I think thing. That was like only the first account. or second. Listen to that. I was only on one up yours a handful of times, but I think it was like the first or second time I was ever on. I was like, "What the fuck is going on? Like, this, is, <laughs> this is crazy." <laughs> Everyone's this fucking so crazy bad. person that you brought in. Oh, man, uh, we need so many good games. That's what blows my mind. That's why. Oh. And Phil, I, does this character have? Does he shoot fewer tears per second because he's only got one eyeball? What, uh, or does he fire at the same amount? No, it's. Just, I, I. I don't know. I don't know what his starting rate is. I think it. It can be the same amount regardless. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. What are we saying? Our diax, like Dylan, you said he made so many good games. Enough. He made enough. He made. What a are movie. we saying? I can't think what of we, anything off the top darkness. of my head that is in Eternal Darkness. Um, Ooh, Twin Snakes, uh, which he didn't make, but I no. thought it was like, a really good version of that game. Yeah, whatever. I know everyone hates that. He made. Um, I mean, Twin Snakes. Console? Twin Snakes was fine, but it was fine because it was like, right? It was mostly Metal Gear Solid. For Blood Omen. It was. Right. Blood Omen. did a Blood Omen Legacy yes. of Pain. Great right. game. And, and that's you, it. And Eternal Darkness. Don't put him in charge of money. He'd be fine. He'd be yeah. alright. Don't put him in charge of money. Don't let him talk to anybody, or let him talk, <laughs> or or just let him keep making those thirty-minute YouTube videos. I just want a like a daily thirty-minute video diary from Dennis Dyack. <laughs> Stretch goals. I think I'm gonna try and have him as a guest on Raising Vanadio. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just come on and be like, please, like please come on we'll my game. Show and please talk about Shadow of the Eternals. Like, let's you. Is it too late. Dylan, like, you I'm sure you'll only stop. Please, Dyack. Is it too late to change the name of Raising Vanadale to My Chocobo Show? Because <laughs> I think that's so simple it works. Yeah, shit. Oh, well. I'm almost done with that. That blows my mind, too. Are you? Hell, Are you going to raise another stuff. Chocobo? Uh, no. <laughs> well, because the Final Fantasy XIV beta starts in, like, two oh, weeks. Right, right, so, right. I mean, priorities, Austin, come on. Yeah, sorry. Can you just, stream that? Just, yeah. Oh, cool. Sure. We should, do, we should stream some of that. Absolutely. People yeah. love the Final Fantasy XI streams. So. I might fight stuff though, so it could be a problem. Uh, that's a problem. Uh, less interested. Yeah. Galaxy Beetle uh, became. You guys, oh, these boys. worms are killing me. What's going on here? Don't thought of worms. What are you doing? I don't know. He's trapped. What do you get? I had. I made a mistake. You got a bad weapon pull this round. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have taken that mirror, but I did. I'm not Ooh. good with that. 